overview of uh, what we just went through in the last uh, couple of sessions. So just share my screen now. Okay, so uh, in the previous session, uh, we just went through what IoT is and, uh, you know, some common misconceptions about IoT, you know, how we can you know, not just visualize the data and try to kind of infer some information from the data that we already have on the internet. So that's what we talked about and we talked about how we could get started with IoT and there I mentioned uh, about the ESP32 uh, platform that's available for everyone to get started at a really low cost. So uh, we looked at this particular board that we had, which was uh, from AI Thinker, and uh, we just went through a couple of introductory pro uh, projects, actually. So we just tried to uh, install uh, the ID and set up the Arduino ID for uh, programming development. And then uh, we went through a couple of simple examples, including LED blink and you know taking an analog beat sensor. And we talked about the whole untouched sensor, PWM and some other things in the last session. So today what, I'll, what I'm aiming to do is I'm just uh, trying to quickly take, through, uh, take you through the Wi-Fi capabilities of ESP32. Again, we just briefly went through it quickly in the last session. So I'll just start with a quick example of how we can you know, get the Wi-Fi up and running in the ESP32 and try some cool projects actually with that. And then what I'll be doing is I'll be showing you how we can send this particular data from the ESP32 onto some cloud platform that's available. We'll be talking about a couple of cloud platforms that are out there, including, you know, ThingsPeak and ThingsPort, and you might have heard about AWS as well. So we'll just cover those briefly, and then we'll try how we can get hands-on with ThingsPeak in this particular session. And uh, if you have any doubt, please do let me know in the chat session, and you can obviously turn, uh, turn on your mic and ask your doubts as well. So uh, with that, I guess I can get started. So any doubts uh, from the previous sessions? Yeah, I guess I'll just get started with uh, uh, today's session. So we'll just uh, be trying to send uh, a particular data from the ESP32 on to uh, the ThingSpeak Cloud platform. So uh, before moving on to that, uh, I'll just uh, briefly mention about you know, what we talked about IoT in the previous session because uh, that's something that we will be uh, needing to revise in this particular session in order to get ahead with uh, ThingSpeak. So as I mentioned, mostly when we look uh, in the internet and try to understand what IoT is and how we can get started with some simple IoT projects. Mostly, uh, most of the platforms, as I mentioned in the previous session, talk about how we can visualize a particular data. And obviously, that's that's the introductory step that we are trying to go through with uh, in this particular session. But there is more to IoT uh, other than the visualization part, as I mentioned in the previous session. So if you look at the number of devices that are connected to the internet, currently it's you know, in, in billions. And the amount of data that's generated, it's in millions of terabytes of data that's being generated. So there's a lot of data out there, and we are trying to generate more and more data. But the thing that we, we need to focus on is actually trying to you know, process this particular data and trying to clean up this data and gather some useful information from this data. And from that useful information is where we try to control other devices and you know, make some amazing projects from that. So as an introductory step into IoT, mostly what we'll be focusing on is trying to get some data onto a particular cloud platform. So let me take an example of uh, a real life scenario. So uh, let's say you want to build uh, maybe a smart uh, energy monitoring system or something for your home. So you want to know uh, which are lights and uh, or fans and all uh, the appliances in your home are turned on at a particular time. And you want to somehow try to control and turn them off one of the most uh, uh, you know, fancy applications of IoT that's most common out there. That's kind of home automation, you can say. So what we'll do is, uh, in a real life scenario, uh, you'll try to uh, incorporate a couple of sensors uh, into your particular home, maybe in the switchboard. You'll be trying to add some current sensors or voltage sensors, and you'll try to analyze the load consumption that's uh, been taking place in the home, and you'll try to analyze the uh, demand as well as uh, the supply that's coming in, and then. Uh, maybe if you want to control a particular device, maybe uh, you have uh, multiple uh, you know, tube lights and uh, fans that are available. You want to control, you want to turn it on and off depending on the state of the system. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, maybe have uh, some kind of a relay module or something and 
uh, when you look at your uh, IoT application on the web and you see that the particular device is turned on, then you'll be having a button, just press on it and uh, then you'll turn off uh, the fan and you can do this from anywhere around the world because this particular website that you see is hosted on the internet. So the obvious thing is, in this particular home, you are having an ESP32. Maybe let's take a simple example of a switchboard. So it said that you are having an ESP32 and a couple of sensors and relay module. So you want to somehow send some data from this ESP32 to the internet as well as send some uh, send some data from your mobile uh, or the website that you have from your mobile onto the ESP32 as well. So you somehow need a communication between the internet and the ESP32. So there are multiple ways of doing that and ways is using uh, some kind of an open source uh, visualization platform that's out there and the most common ones that when suppose things speak so things speak uh, is a platform which is provided by mathworks actually you might have heard about matlab so uh, the same company has provided us with this uh, platform as well so one of the advantage uh, you might have guessed is that once you send this particular data from esp32 onto their cloud platform you can just take the data and process the data on matlab or um, similar systems for better understanding of the data Again, today what we'll be doing is we'll be trying to understand how we can send that particular data from the ESP32 onto a particular cloud system. Let's say in this case, we are trying to send it to uh, the ThingSpeak platform. So again, as I mentioned, today's session will be a completely hands-on session. So I'll just uh, move from my presentation on to uh, my browser. So if anyone is uh, following with me, you can just uh, go ahead and do the steps that I'm going to do. So the first thing is, as I mentioned, you want some place to visualize the data and uh, the thing that we are going to use is ThingSpeak. So I'll just go to my browser. So you can see that uh, if we go ahead to Google and search ThingSpeak, we have a, a website called uh, thingspeak.com. So that's where we are trying to uh, gather our data and visualize the data onto the cloud system. And, you know, Wikipedia, uh, the Google says that it's uh, used to communicate with internet-enabled devices. So that's the platform where you can essentially visualize the data and send the data from uh, the internet connected devices, basically IoT based devices. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to just go to their website, which is thingspeak.com. And once you go to uh, this particular website, you can see that uh, there's an option for get, uh, get started right here. So you need to just click on that. Again, as I mentioned, this, this is from the company who makes uh, MATLAB, which is MathWorks. And if you already have a MATLAB account and you are already signed in to your MATLAB uh, using a particular email ID and a password, you can use the same uh, email ID and password here. So in this case, I'll, or if you don't have a MATLAB account, you can just create one by clicking on here. So I already have one. So I'll just type in my uh, mail ID and I'll just log into this particular platform. Uh, then I'll just give my password as well. So yeah, so once you uh, log into this particular platform, you will have something like this. You will not be having any of these IoT LM or my IoT BBLM or Smart Beespin or any of those things because uh, those are things that I already created in my previous project. So you will be having only one option, which is called create new channel. So in ThingSpeak, you have something called the channels. Uh, essentially, you can think of it as if you're trying to do multiple projects at a particular point of time, you'll be having different channels. So if, uh, maybe if you're trying to, again, as I mentioned, if you're trying to use energy management system, you will be having a particular channel uh, which is dedicated for that particular project. And inside that project, you can have multiple uh, data visualization plug, uh, uh, you know, graphs and uh, gauges which help you to visualize the data. So the one of the limitations with Again, this is a free version of ThingSpeak, and one of the limitations with ThingSpeak is that you, you can only uh, go for four channels at, at, at a particular time with a free version. So I already have four, so I'll just delete uh, one of the channels, and I'll just show you how you can uh, get started with this thing. So yeah, so once you go to this particular platform, you'll have an option for a new channel. So you need to just click on that, and it will ask you for some fields uh, which are on this on their website. So the first one is obviously the name. So this can be any uh, name of your project that you're currently doing. We just uh, give it as EETIC for the time being. And then if you have any description of uh, what you're going to do, you can just uh, give it on this particular box, uh, text box actually. And then if you see down here, 
you have eight fields. So uh, the fields are basically if you are trying to send some particular data onto this uh, free tier of uh, ThingSpeak, you can have eight multiple data that are coming in uh, from the ESP32 or any other platform you are using. So currently we are trying to send a single data uh, to, to ThingSpeak platform. So we have the field one. So I just enable the field one for the time being. So again, this is the name that we are giving for the field one. If you are sending some temperature data, you can give it as temperature of your if you're sending in some current uh, values and you can, uh, you know, change that as a current uh, reading. And if you're trying to send which are loads are turned on, you can rename it as a load reading. So if you essentially get it, you can name uh, it anything that you want. So, so for the time being, for the demonstration purpose, we'll just keep it as feed label one. And then you have some other options as well. You can link to GitHub and all those fancy things are available. For for the time being, we'll just keep it on the standard that uh, they have provided us. And then if you scroll to the uh, bottom part, then you can see that there's an option for save channel. So we'll just save that once we are given the name as ETIC, I will save the channel. So once you have done that, you will have something like this. So this is uh, basically the visualization platform that ThinkSpeak is providing. And you can see I had enabled only one field uh, previously when we set up this particular channel. And hence, I have uh, one field chart. So what this chart does is that when you're trying to send a particular data from the ESP32 onto this platform, it will just uh, represent that data in this particular chart format. So this essentially gives us a line chart, actually. So again, now you might be thinking, I don't want a line chart. I might uh, want something else. I want uh, maybe a gauge or something. So what I'll do is I'll just go to an uh, option called Add Widgets uh, right here. So I'll just click on that. And then so uh, then we have an option for gauge. So what I'll do is I'll just click on the gauge and click Next. So here you can see that you can give a particular name to this particular uh, gauge dial that you just uh, selected and then you can check which particular data that you want to visualize uh, using this gauge. Again, as I mentioned, we have we can have up to eight different fields uh, for the free uh, thing speak and currently I have only uh, just selected one. So uh, I want the field one data to be visualized as a gauge. Again, I will just give the name as, uh, you know, a gauge visualization for the time being. So you try to give it the name that uh, of the object or data that you are trying to uh, visualize using this particular thing. So I'll just give gauge visualization and then uh, so if you uh, check the other fields that are present here, you can see that there's a minimum and a maximum value. So the minimum value is a minimum value which the gauge reads and then the maximum values up to what uh, value you want the gauge to be uh, to read. So basically it's uh, the, the least value and the maximum value as the many measures which the gauge reads. And there's some other uh, customizations also, uh, that are available for the gauge. So we'll just uh, leave it in the default for now. And then uh, we'll just click, click on create. So now you can see that we have a gauge uh, which has come up. Again, it shows that field value is unavailable because we are not uh, sending any uh, value to this particular platform at, at the current moment. So we'll just see that uh, in a couple of minutes. So again, if you look closely in the gauge, you can see that the minimum value that is reading is zero and the maximum value is 100. So that's uh, what I mentioned in uh, when I set up uh, this particular gauge uh, dial. So the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is 100. So what essentially will happen is that when we are trying to send a particular data from our ESP32 onto this particular uh, cloud platform, this particular chart and this particular gauge will read the same value, but the only difference is that the kind of visualization that they give us is different. The first one will be a line chart with uh, uh, dot labels, which essentially give us the data points. And the gauge is uh, where the data will be visualized in a gauge format, uh, like a speedometer or something. So you'll be having uh, the data visualized in the gauge format. Again, on the bottom, that data will be written uh, in text format as well. So that's all about the things that we need to set up on ThingSpeak. So now I'll just move on to the Arduino ID and uh, let's get started with how we can send the data onto this uh, cloud platform. So I'll just open up my Arduino ID. Yeah, so. So once you open up uh, the Arduino ID, it will look something like this if you are uh, doing it for uh, the first time. Again, uh, in the previous times, uh, 
uh, sending a particular data to the ThingSpeak platform was a bit difficult because uh, we needed to do uh, write a lot of code. So now what ThingSpeak has done for us is that it has provided us uh, with a library for uh, the Arduino and ESP32 other board. So we just uh, include, uh, try to download that library and try to see how we can send a particular data from uh, ESP32 onto the cloud platform. For, so for that, what we'll do is we'll just go to sketch and then include a particular library. So I'll just go to manage libraries. So in this, what you need to do is you have a text box option right here. So you need to just type in things pick. So the first thing that comes up is by MathWorks. As I mentioned, uh, ThingsPeak is a pl platform that's provided by MathWorks. So what you need to do is you need to install this particular uh, library that ThingsPeak has provided us with. Again, if you uh, read the description here, it's uh, compatible with Arduino and the ESP8266 uh, and 32 board. So we'll just install that particular library. So once that's installed, we'll just close this and we'll just go to file and examples. So the good thing is that they have also provided us with a couple of examples for us to follow. So we can just modify their example and try to bring it uh, to our uh, project. So if we go to examples and things speak, you can see that there is an option for all the Arduino boards as well as the ESP32, which we are currently trying to use. So inside the ESP32, if you see, there is an example called write single field. So where we are trying to send the data from the ESP32 to a sing just a single field on the cloud platform. So uh, as I just uh, set it up, Earlier, we are just given it a single field in the setup of things speak. So we're just trying to write a particular data onto that particular field using the ESP32. So we'll just open this example up. Again, uh, we have some uh, comments which they have provided for our understanding. So I'll just take you through the code. So it's a pretty simple code actually. So here, if you see, we have in, uh, included the Wi-Fi.h library. So any uh, project that you're working with on Wi-Fi will be needing to include this particular uh, header file in, in the beginning, which is the Wi-Fi .h to expose the Wi-Fi capabilities of any of the boards that you're trying to use. And then you have an interesting library called the secrets.h. So what that does is that if you scroll down a little bit, you can see that you need to give the SSID and password of your network in order for the ESP32 to the, connect to the internet. So if you just uh, you know type in your SSID and password and try to send this to you know, some of your friends for uh, continuing with the project, then they will get access to that uh, ID and uh, password. So to kind of hide it away from uh, the, send, uh, the person you are trying to send this particular thing to, you have uh, this library called secrets.h. Again, there is an interesting documentation of this in uh, the Arduino website, so you can just check it out there. And then finally, the most important thing that is uh, the ThingSpeak library. So we need to include the header file for ThingSpeak, which which we just uh, downloaded. And then if you move down, uh, here what we need to do is, we need to give the SSID and password for our network. So I'll just connect my uh, mobile's hotspot to uh, the ESP32 so that the ESP32 has got internet connectivity. So I'll just uh, check the name of my, yeah. So what you need to do here is you need to provide uh, uh, SSID and password of a network which has internet connection. So I'm just uh, trying to give my uh, mobile hotspot again. This, this this needs to be included as a string. So I'll just put it inside a string. And you need to give the password of your network. So in my case, it's uh, D5H7P5W. So again, this also needs to be inside a string. So that's uh, all about the setup that you need to do here. Again, uh, moving on, uh, what we do here is we are trying to initialize um, the Wi-Fi client. And then again, if you move down, we can see that we have uh, also created two new uh, variables as well. One is called the channel number and one is called the right API key. So I'll just again go to the ThingSpeak platform we have. We can see that this is uh, the channel one. So the channel number corresponds to the uh, which of which channel you are connected to. So 
in our case it's channel number one so we'll just give it uh, the channel id as channel number one and then the the most important thing that you need to uh, see here is uh, is the right api key so for that uh, you need to go to the thingspeak platform and if you see here uh, you have an option for api key so we'll just click on that and here you have write api key and read api key so currently what we are trying to do is we are trying to write a particular data onto the thingspeak platform so we need to use the right api key so api just is application programming interface so we'll not get uh, much in depth into what api is but for the time being we'll just copy this particular uh, key and then just paste it on to here so again this this also needs to be uh, inserted as a string so i'll just give uh, the quotation marks uh, to put it inside a string so that's all uh, the setup uh, that we need to do so again we'll just uh, scroll down and see what all else is written inside the core again here what we are doing is we are trying to uh, start up the serial monitor with the board rate of uh, this much and then if we move down you can see that um, this particular uh, example is running uh, in the station mode so in the previous session if you have watched so you can just uh, review it in the uh, in our youtube channel so here uh, we are trying to use in the station mode so in the previous video i mentioned that we have the station mode as well as the soft access point mode so those are the two types of uh, uh, possibilities that we can use with the ESP32 Wi-Fi and in this particular example they have used uh, it in the station mode and here we are just initializing the thing speak. So again if we move on that's all about the setup that we need to do so that's all that's coming under the board setup and if we try to go inside the loop what they're trying to do is they're so this initial block of code is kind of seemingly com complicated but it's pretty simple what essentially they are trying to do is they are trying to connect to this particular SSID and password that we just provided here. So in my case it was my mobile hotspot and I gave it the password. So this particular block of line is trying to connect uh, to that particular SSID and password so to, in order to get the internet connection. So if it, if it has successfully connected to the internet, we will just print a message called connected onto the serial monitor. And then if we move down, this is the most important part of this particular program we just need to add one single line in order to send a particular data to things speak so they have simplified it to a great extent so that we can just uh, get ahead and working uh, start working on the project uh, as quick as possible so things speak uh, the library that we have just installed and the header file that we just included provides us with a method called write field as the name suggests we are trying to write a particular data onto the field that we just created on things speak and inside the parameters that we need to give there are four parameters the first one is channel number which again we gave at the top and the second one is a field number so currently we are trying to send you the field one if you just uh, just go to things speak so we can see that uh, here we are trying to send it to the field number one so I've just given it as one and the number uh, and this number represents the data that you need to send so we'll just come to that in a moment and then we have the right api key which we just copied from uh, the thing speak platform so now just uh, let's focus on the number uh, variable that we have given here so essentially this number is anything that you want to send to this particular cloud platform and that can be maybe a sensor data or any random values or some other string data that you need to send to a particular cloud cloud platform in this case things speak so things speaks essentially takes numbers actually so any integer value so currently we are trying to send a random uh, number to visualize on that particular cloud platform so in a real situation we are trying where you are trying to implement this on a project you'll be uh, giving some kind of a sensor data uh, as this particular uh, variable so instead of this particular variable you'll be trying to give it a sensor data that you need to visualize on the cloud so that's all about the number and again if you go down you have a simple uh, um, increment uh, so what you're doing is you're trying to increment this particular number so again uh, if we scroll up to the top of this particular code you can see that i have initialized uh, they have initialized the number variable as zero initially so what this code essentially does is that every uh, 20 seconds actually this number will be incremented by one so initially uh, at the zero uh, time of time reference it will be sending a value of zero then after 20 seconds it, it will send a value of one again after 20 seconds it will you know send a value of two and so on so that's what uh, is going to happen with this particular code 
So I'll just uh, try to dump this. I guess uh, initially I'll just try to verify if uh, everything is done correctly. So I'll just compile this particular sketch and see if everything is working properly for the ESP32 dev module that we are trying to use today. Yeah, so we can see that this is, it has done compile. So I'll just upload it to my uh, board and we can see how the data comes on this particular cloud platform. So it has started uh, uploading. So once uh, that happens, we need to just press the reset button on the ESP32 in order to dump the code. Yeah, so uh, it's currently uploading in, uh, in the previous part. I just forgot to press the reset button. That's why it just showed an error. So now we can see that this is, it has done uploading. And if we just open up uh, the serial monitor, you can see that it is attempting to connect to my SSID, which is essentially to the hotspot. And yeah, so that has uh, been connected to the internet. So now uh, our ESP32 is connected um, to a particular uh, the hotspot, uh, the connection that we just provided it, it with. And we have a message called channel update is successful. So what that means is that if we just go to the uh, platform that we just made, we can see that there is a data point that has come to the uh, ThingSpeak platform, which is uh, a value of zero. And it was sent at uh, this particular time. Again, now if you just saw it got updated to a new value, we can see that it has sent a value of one. As I mentioned, every 20 seconds, it will increment the value by one. So that's why from zero, it just went on to one. So this will be a linear graph. Um, and you can see all this, uh, you know, this timestamp of, of this particular data and what data uh, you're trying to send it to the cloud. Again, if you see uh, the gauge visualization on the left, uh, you can see that uh, the gauge uh, needle is moving uh, ahead as the data is coming. So currently we are uh, at a data point of uh, the value two. So that's why this gauge is uh, showing a value of two. And in this chart also, if you just hover over that data point, you can see that uh, the current data that has come is a value of three and we just give the timestamp uh, data as well. So that's uh, pretty much all about how you can send this particular data to the IoT platform. And I hope uh, you all got to learn something new today. And uh, with that, I guess uh, we are winding up uh, the session on IoT. So again, if I went too quickly and if you couldn't grasp it, uh, hopefully the session will be recorded and uh, shared with you in our YouTube channel. So if you have any other doubts, you can just let me know now or else uh, I'll just keep my contact email and number details. So you can just mail me or ask any doubts. So otherwise, uh, thank you everyone once again for joining us uh, for the session in this evening. So thank you so much. <laughs>